Hi everybody, I've just been doing some cleaning and fa have found a device or two lying around. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a video about what kind of equipment that you might need when you do a live video production or live streaming. I'll be covering a range of options for those that are new to live streaming and live production to those that have been around for a little bit. We'll take a quick look at capture devices, cameras, audio, controllers, streaming, and computers. If you do want to know more information about a certain product or something that we cover in this video, feel free to check out our supported hardware page on our website or send us an email uh, via our support page at vmix.com. For those that are new to live production and streaming, there are some really simple ways to get started. Firstly, you're going to need a way to be seen and heard, and typically this is done using a camera. The good thing is nowadays is that most laptops have a webcam and microphone built into them. Do you have a laptop? Well, if you do, then you're ready to start broadcasting to the world. All you need to do is add your webcam as a camera input into vMix, uh, give yourself a lower third title, and then maybe an intro video, and you've got yourself a live streaming show. For those that want to add a little bit more quality to their productions, there are plenty of HD webcams from Microsoft and Logitech that are supported in vMix. These will generally provide a better quality camera than your inbuilt webcam, and because they're uh, portable, you'll be able to plug it into any computer with a USB port. Using a webcam is the simplest and most affordable way to get into live video production, as you can create great content with one, and most people already have a webcam. Webcams are also good because you can connect them via USB directly to your computer. If you're looking for a better quality video and you want to use a HDMI or an SDI camera, then you'll need to have a way to get that video signal into your vMix computer as you can't just connect HDMI or SDI directly into your computer like you can with USB. These are known as capture devices. There are a couple of different methods to get your video into your production. Firstly, you can use an external capture device. Now, external capture devices allow you to connect your camera to your computer via USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt. These USB 3.0 devices are typically plug and play, so you just plug them in and you'll be able to see your video in vMix. There are plenty of options available out there, including Magewell, AJA, UTAP, and InnoGenie. For example, this is the, the Magewell capture device here. So it's small, just plug in. Um, this is an SDI one, but you can plug in, you know, have a HDMI model, and then this goes out via USB 3.0. Fun fact, these devices can also be known as dongles. So if you hear somebody talking about a USB capture dongle, that's what they're referring to. It's best to check out our website if you're looking to purchase one, as we have all of our supported hardware on there. Some of them are USB 2, so they can't support stable HD video properly, so it's best to check that out. Now, another external option is to use something like the AJA IO 4K, which allows you to input four SDI cameras through a Thunderbolt connector. Thunderbolt is a protocol that allows great speed for large amounts of video data, so you can be assured that your four HD cameras will have a reliable feed into vMix. So here's the AJA IO 4K, as you can see you've got four SDI connectors back here and it, it's portable so you can um, take that around. Now you can also build or purchase your own external uh, Thunderbolt device and use your own capture card in it. If you use one of these options you'll need to make sure that your computer or laptop supports Thunderbolt. We use this external Thunderbolt option for our trade show booths as it's easy to bring along a laptop and the AJA IO 4K and we know that we're going to have a rock solid four camera HD production. Now the most common way to input SDI or HDMI cameras into a computer is via a capture card. A capture card will connect to your computer's motherboard via PCI Express and allow for a super fast and super high data transfer connection. Now these cards come in all shapes and sizes but will typically look something like this here. They range in number and type of input and also price. There are single input cards out there, such as this uh, Blackmagic Design MIDI recorder for under $200. Um, there are four input HDMI cards from Magewell if you need multiple HDMI inputs. Uh, four SDI input cards, like this one here. This is an AJA card. And there are also up to eight input SDI cards from AJA and Blackmagic Design. Like this one here, this is a Blackmagic um, Decklink Quad 2, which has eight inputs and you can also configure some of them to be outputs too. Now it's important to think about what equipment you already have as uh, what you plan to use for your live production uh, will dictate what kind of capture card or device you'll need. So say you have four HDMI cameras, there's no real point in buying an eight input card for SDI. So just make sure, have a look at what you've got 
and then um, have a look at what you're going to buy and then pick the correct capture card for you. We have a massive list of supported cards and capture devices on our supported hardware page on vmix.com. This page covers everything from one input USB 3 devices right up to eight input SDI cards. Um, it breaks down what type of connection you'll be using, whether it's USB, HDMI, or SDI, and how many inputs, how many outputs, the video resolution, and the connection requirements of each card or device. We have a great list of manufacturers, including AJA, Blackmagic, Bluefish, Magewell, and Yuan, just to name a few. Next, we'll look at cameras for your live production. Now, you want to put your best face forward uh, when it comes to your productions, and to do this, you'll need a good camera. As I mentioned before, you can use a HD webcam for your production, uh, but if you want a little bit more quality and control, you're going to need to look into a HDMI or an SDI camera. The great news is if the camera supports SDI or HDMI live video out, then you'll be able to connect it to vMix. For example, this Canon Vixia allows you to send out a HD signal um, via HDMI that you can bring into a capture device and then start using in your production. So instead of rushing out and buying a whole bunch of different cameras, um, you may want to check your friends and relatives and see if they've got any old cameras lying around in their cupboard, any old camcorders that have live video out, or maybe even you have some yourself. So you could save a fair bit of money if you had uh, some old cameras that you use. These ones work great um, and they're really good for live streaming. There are plenty of affordable HD video cameras out there, including the uh, Canon Vixia range. Um, as well as this, we have a we use this Sony PX70 for our production, um, which is really good quality. But there are a ton out there to choose from. Um, now, be wary of using DSLRs uh, as they're not designed for live video output. Uh, many of them don't support it, but um, a lot of the times, even if they do, it can be quite delayed compared to video cameras. Um, so, if you're looking to use a DSLR, definitely make sure to see if it's going to support live video or not. Now another option may be a PTZ camera. For those that are new to cameras, uh, PTZ cameras allow you to control the pan, tilt and zoom um, of the camera remotely. So you can use a remote control, an app or a web interface to control most of the functions for a PTZ camera. Now a vMix allows you to control certain web enabled cameras already, so Sony, Panasonic and PTZ Optics. These cameras are great for a one-person production as you can create multiple camera shots from one camera. They're also good for hard to reach places because you can adjust them remotely. These cameras can have different video connectors too. For example, um, this PTZ Optics camera here has SDI and HDMI. Now if your camera supports SDI or HDMI out, then you'll be able to use it in vMix. Uh, we have some more expensive cameras here like this Panasonic. So yeah, there are plenty of options out there for cameras and um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. Okay, so audio. It's great that everyone can see you now with your camera and your caption device, but can they hear you? Well, you can easily use a camera's microphone for your audio in your vMix production. If you're looking to simply add maybe a little bit better quality, um, then you can add a microphone that uses USB to connect to vMix with. So for example, here we have this uh, USB microphone. It's a Blue Yeti microphone. Now I use this for all my tutorial videos and a lot of people use it for um, live streaming and vlogging and for doing uh, game casting and that sort of thing. All you need to do is just connect it to your computer via USB uh, and then mix the audio through vMix. Now, if you would like more audio options and control, then vMix has a heap of compatible equipment that you can use with that. For example, you can use vMix to mix all of your audio through the vMix Audio Mixer. Now, at the moment, I'm using this wireless microphone from DPA, and that is going into a USB audio interface via XLR. Then that device is being connected via USB to our vMix PC. I'm then mixing the audio levels directly within vMix. So that's one way you could possibly bring in uh, additional XLR microphones. You could also use a USB audio mixer to create a master audio output of all your microphones and then bring that into vMix and use that as a master audio. Now, if all of this audio stuff is a little bit confusing, um, simply put, you can easily use your camera and the microphone to make a live production. They, they sound great, but if you're looking for that extra bit of quality and control, you can add you know, a USB microphone or you could add an XLR microphone via USB interface or something like that. Or go all out and have your own mixer. That's entirely up to you. One of the things that sets vMix apart is the amount of control that you can have over your production. You can set up pretty much any shortcut or trigger to perform a function in vMix. So like most applications, you can use your keyboard and mouse here to control vMix. 
you can set up keyboard shortcuts to perform pretty much any function you want. vMix also has MIDI support, which allows users to program buttons and faders on MIDI devices to perform almost any function in vMix. As you can see here, we have a couple of MIDI devices. I have a Novation and an Akai here, but any MIDI device will be able to connect to vMix. You can do all sorts of crazy things like camera switching, overlays, replay, audio content, audio volume levels, recording, streaming, etc, etc. The list is really long. Um, you may even have an old MIDI device lying around from your, you know, your younger DJ days. So check your cupboard again for maybe some MIDI devices or ask somebody that might have one lying around. Um, and you can use that to control your entire vMix production. There are plenty of MIDI devices out there to choose from, like I mentioned before, from Akai, Novation, Behringer, Korg, etc. Um, some of these models are well under $100, um, so that's a great option for vMix control. Now another great option is X keys. So we have an X keys here. Now that's something that we use for our monthly vMix productions. Um, you can assign any function to these keys for your production. So the best thing is you can label them as well. So you can set up all your cameras, all your audio, um, all that kind of stuff on your uh, X key button and then press it when you want to do it. So these devices allow you to control your entire video production with just the press of a couple of buttons. So it's super easy that even I can do it um, to control my entire production. Uh, if you want to know how to set them up, just check out our shortcuts video. It's really simple. Press a button, choose a function, and you're done. So if you want to learn how to set up your keyboard, MIDI device, or X keys, check out that video. Okay, so now we've covered cameras, capture, control, and audio. But what's a live production if no one gets to see it? Live streaming has become a huge part of broadcast, with more and more large events being covered every single day. It's easy to do with vMix, and you have a huge range of options on how to get your content out there. There are great free options out there now, including YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Periscope Producer, Twitch, Hitbox, um, just to name a few. I'm sure there will be plenty of more just around the corner too. Now, vMix supports all of these free options, as well as paid streaming providers such as Ustream, Decast, and Wowza. These paid streaming providers, or CDNs, will offer personalized support and more advanced features compared to those free services. You can even use vMix to send out your stream to multiple locations directly to cover your entire audience base. If your provider isn't listed in our streaming list, don't worry as you can still stream using your URL and name and be streaming in no time. If you'd like your streaming provider added to the list, just let us know. The one thing with streaming to consider is to make sure that you have a good internet connection. Um, you're going to need plenty of headroom when you're, you're streaming and the upload speed is going to be the most important thing to your connection. So make sure you have a look to see what sort of internet co connection you have and use your streaming settings accordingly. If you have any questions about streaming, check out our streaming tutorial or send us through an email. One other thing to consider is the type of computer you're going to use vMix on. We've created some reference systems on our website with exact specifications for certain production scenarios. We have PCs listed as well as some laptop options. You can choose to build a vMix computer yourself or have one of our vMix resellers build you a custom computer and provide some advanced support. If you've already got a computer and want to know if it will work well with vMix, we have some minimum requirements listed on our supported hardware page. Where possible, we recommended using dedicated graphics. However, if you've got quite a small production, you may be able to use the onboard graphics of the computer. It's going to be best to check out our supported hardware page for the recommended system requirements. So thanks for watching our equipment video today. Uh, there was a whole lot of information and ideas about how to get your production up and running um, or how to make your awesome production even more awesomer. If you have any questions about anything we've covered, feel free to send us an email through our support page. We'll be able to answer questions about getting started with streaming, compatible computer setups, and your production workflow. If you're new to vMix, don't forget to look at our vMix tutorials on our website and on our YouTube page, as well as our knowledge base and help guide on our website. You can also have a look at our forums on our website for more information about vMix or to ask other vMix users some questions. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix tutorial.